Hello students, we have already discussed opportunistic mycosis and now we will look into the recap of opportunistic mycosis quickly. So these are the opportunistic fungal infections which has already been discussed. Now let us look into the recap of each of these. The most common is candidiasis. It is the most common fungal disease in humans and it is caused by candida albicans which is the most common candidal species in human infections and morphologically these are yeast like fungi. They are component of the normal flora of the human body and they can cause diseases in immune compromised. However, in immune competent patients as well, they are reported to cause many infections. Now the other species of candida are known as candida non-albicans and these also cause human infections. Among them the most common is candida tropicalis and these are the other species non-albican species which cause human infections. One of the questions which is asked in the exams is candida parasolopsis which is known to spread through the pair caregiver hands. Candida parasolopsis spreads through the caregiver hands hence it is an important cause of nosocomial infections. Another important point to note is candida auris which is a very very resistant strain of candida and it is resistant to almost all the antifungals available. The coming to the clinical manifestations, there are two types, the infectious diseases and the allergic diseases caused by candida. The infectious diseases, the most common are the mucocutaneous infections and the oral thrush. This is a clinical entity which is asked in the exams as an image based question and this is the commonest image which you get in the exams where you can see the white curdy patch in the tongue which is a case of oral candidiasis and it is common in HIV positive patients. Other clinical manifestations are stomatitis, glossitis, elementary canal involvement in the form of esophagitis, gastritis, vulvovaginitis occur in women and it is often encountered in the gynecological OPDs and the wards and the clincher in the question which you will be having to diagnose this clinical condition is curdy like vaginal discharge, curd like. So this is the point which you should remember. Uh, chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis occurs in patients with deficient CMI. Ocular candidiasis occurs when the, a patient is given tropical steroids. Cutaneous manifestations occur in the form of intertriginous paronychia onychomycosis and diaper dermatitis. These are the infection of the nails and the folds of the fingers. Systemic manifestations occur as UTI, endocarditis, pulmonary candidiasis, meningitis, canindidemia, arthritis, osteomyelitis, endophthalmitis and nosocomial candidiasis. And allergic manifestations occur due to the metabolites of the candida and occur as candids, eczema, asthma and gastritis. Now let us see this question, a sexually active young woman presented with curdy white vaginal discharge, itching and dyspareunia. She responded to treatment with oral fluconazole and the likely causative agent for this infection could be. So here you have two clues in this question to arrive at the answer. First is the curdy white vaginal discharge and second is that she responded to the treatment with an antifungal. Hence your answer here is candida albicans. And now the other options we will see trichomonas vaginalis which will be discussed under parasitology. However, I will tell you the important point here that this causes similar kind of infection but there is a frothy green foul smelling discharge. And Cardinella vaginalis is responsible for causing bacterial vaginosis which will again be discussed under the separate subheadings and topics. This is the another question which has been asked in AIMS. An HIV positive patient presented with the following lesion in the oral cavity. What is the treatment? So here you have an HIV positive patient and also this clinical image which shows the curdy white patch on the tongue indicating that the patient is suffering from oral candidiasis. So the treatment here would be antifungal agents. Next coming to the laboratory diagnosis, the direct microscopic examination shows budding yeast cells with pseudohyphae. So in this image you can see 
that there are e cells all these circular structures are the budding e cells and this elongated structures are the uh, pseudo hyphae which is seen in this candida candidal infections can you see this this is a gram stain and these all circular structures are the e cells and this is the pseudo hyphae in which there are constrictions at the end they are not like actual hyphae they are pseudo hyphae because they do not have parallel sides and parallel septations coming to the culture the colonies are creamy white pasty colonies and there is an easty order now how to differentiate the species first is the germ tube test which is also known as reynolds broad phenomena which has been asked in the exams in the central institutes as well as neat now what is this whenever you culture the candida colony with human serum within 2 hours these kind of budding e cells and this elongated projections are seen in which there is no constriction in between so this is known as a germ tube and this germ tube production is shown only by candida albicans and candida dublinensis and hence you can easily identify candida albicans within 2 hours uh, by this test next is dalmau plate culture this is a type of technique in which the candida is grown in a nutritionally deficient media which is a cornmeal agar so in this whenever there is nutrition deficient then the candida produces chlamydospores these are thick walled refractile spores and these are produced only by two species candida albicans and candida dublinensis apart from these two method another method is the chrome agar in which the chrome agar when the colonies are inoculated different candida species produces different color and helps in isolation as well as identification next is the g test so this is important and this has been asked in the ini cet recent exam so if this is for detection of alpha 13 glucan for diagnosis of invasive fungal infections so it is positive for aspergillus candida and pneumocystis gerovici acp so in these three it is positive and it is negative for mucor and rhizopus so in patients with infection due to zygomycetes this test will be negative next coming to the treatment the oral thrush which is the commonest infection so in this the tropical azoles are the drug of choice esophageal candidiasis and vulvovaginitis there is oral fluconazole which is the drug of choice so you have to remember that azoles are the mainstay of treatment except in cases of disseminated candidiasis when amphotericin b is given and there are two candida species which exhibit intrinsic resistance to azoles are candida glabrata and candida cruzi now coming to another question a patient presented with dysphagia and was diagnosed with esophageal candidiasis the organism isolated was cultured in human serum and below are the finding visible on microscopy of the culture so here it is already mentioned that the patient is suffering from esophageal candidiasis the next whatever written here is indicates the germ tube test so and this is the finding in which you can see the production of the germ tubes so this phenomenon is known as germ tube formation so this is an easy image based question and instead of germ tube formation there can also be written reynolds broad phenomena so you should be able to answer this question now coming to the next opportunistic infection cryptococcus cryptococcus neoformans cryptococcus getae are the causes uh, neoformans is the most common and there are four serotypes a b c and d and a is the most common serotype these are capsulated yeast so this is an important point which can be mentioned in the question you can arrive at the diagnosis of cryptococcus that these are capsulated yeast and they show budding also they affect immune compromised patients particularly hiv positive and also in immune competent infection uh, patients also they have been reported to cause infections epidemiologically cryptococcus neoformans var grubi is the most common type and the most common type in europe is cryptococcus neoformans were neoformans another important point is that cryptococcus is also known as european blastomycosis 
Now coming to the pathogenesis of cryptococcus, this image uh, describes the pathogenesis. You should know that the most common source of infection are the avian feces or the pigeon droppings from which there is inhalation of the desiccated yeast, yeast which enters into the lung and there is phagocytosis by the alveolar macrophages. Now either there can be resolution or latency and when the immune status of the patient is down there can be dissemination. The most common site for dissemination is the central nervous system and cryptococcal meningitis is a commonest manifestation in HIV positive patients. Apart from this you should also remember that eucalyptus tree is also a reservoir of cryptococcus geti. So there is a T in the tree and there are two T in geti. Hence you should remember that cryptococcus geti is also found in this tree. These are the virulence factors for this fungi. Capsule melanin production by this enzyme which is possessed by this fungi. Silic acids, production of urease, mannitol production, superoxide this mutase secretion. Now coming to the clinical manifestation, pulmonary cryptococcus occurs but it is self limiting and there can be dry cough and pneumonitis. Most common manifestation which is encountered in the clinic or in the OPD or the emergency are the CNS infection in which there is meningoencephalitis and cryptococcoma because this fungus has strong predilection for the CNS. Visceral cryptococcus can also occur. Cutaneous cryptococcus, the most common extraneural site is the skin and the serotype D is the most common type which is causing infection in the skin. Osseous cryptococcus occurs when there is involvement of the bone and you must mark that the lesions which occur are osteolytic. Coming to the laboratory diagnosis, this is a direct microscopy of the CSF with India ink. So this has been asked many times as an image based question. India ink is an example of a negative stain. This is also an MCQ. Which of the following is a negative stain? So you should remember India ink is a negative stain which means that the background is stained and the yeast, this budding yeast is unstained and there is a surrounding halo which represents the capsule. The size is 5 to 20 micrometer. Histopathologically staining with pass, HNE and GMS, similar image is seen. This is the E cell and this surrounding big halo is the unstained area is the uh, capsule of this fungus. Mason-Fontana stain is used for melanin production. Coming to the culture which occurs at 37 degrees Celsius because it is an yeast. There is again creamy white pasty colonies produced uh, and another special media used for this fungi is bird seed agar or staves agar which is actually uh, particularly used for this cryptococcus. Rapid urease test is there in which within 2 hours there is urease production by this fungus and there can be used as a identification test. Antigen detection test with latex agglutination, animal pathogenicity can be done by intracerebral inoculation of mice. Coming to the treatment, amphotericin B is the drug of choice and the gold standard for rapid sterilization of CNS in cases of CNS cryptococcus. Fluconazole can also be used. Now coming to this image based question, identify the organism from the microscopic image given below. So here you can clearly see that it is an India ink preparation in which the background is stained black and the yeast cells are unstained and there are big halos indicating the capsule of the fungi. Hence the answer here is Cryptococcus neoformans. A HIV positive patient presented with altered sensorium and neck rigidity. His CD4 count is 100. Uh, CSF reveals the following picture. What is the likely pathogen? Now here the patient is HIV positive and he is presenting with clinical features of meningitis. The CD4 count is 100 that is very low and here is the gram stain of the CSF. In this image you can see the blue colored structures with a surrounding halo or the unstained area indicating the capsule and the budding yeast.
Hence, the diagnosis here is Cryptococcus neoformans. Now, coming to the next opportunistic infection, aspergillosis. Primary pulmonary infection is caused by aspergillus. It is mainly a pulmonary infection and the most common species causing human infections is aspergillus fumigatus. There are many species of aspergillus, but these three species you should remember from exam point of view. The mode of infection is inhalation of the spores or direct entry through the wounds. Conidial germination occurs in the absence of sufficient pulmonary defense that is whenever the immune status of the patient goes down. The alveolar macrophages are responsible for destroying the conidia and the leukocytes destroy the hyphae. The risk factors include steroid therapy that is the patient who are on prolonged steroid therapy are at a high risk of developing aspergillosis and immune compromised patients like HIV positive patients and patients with neutropenia. Coming to the clinical manifestation, pulmonary disease, the most common manifestation, allergic aspergillosis, which presents as bronchial asthma. Now, ABPA is a clinical entity which is allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, and these are the diagnostic criteria for it. This can be asked as an integrated question or it can also be asked in medicine. So, bronchial asthma occurs in 100% of the cases, pulmonary infiltrates occur, fleeting shadow central bronchiectasis is an important feature both of these are present eosinophilia in blood is present in 80 to 100 percent patients immune response to aspergillus fumigatus type 1 and type 3 is seen in 100 percent patients the sputum eosinophilia occurs history of plugs that is the uh, coughing up of mucus uh, entangled with fungal hyphae is known as history of coughing of plugs which occurs in 74 percent of the patients and culture positivity is in 46 to 83 percent patients. Now aspergilloma is also known as fungal ball in which the in chest x-ray you can see a ball like structure and the common name for this is fungal ball. Invasive aspergillosis there is dissemination of the infection, it occurs in immune compromised patients. Other manifestations are involvement of the CNS, invasive sinusitis, aspergillus endocarditis, cutaneous aspergillosis. Mycotoxicosis is due to the toxin produced by aspergillus flavus. This question has also been asked. It occurs when there is a growth of aspergillus flavors in maize or any other kind of grain and this is the toxin which is produced. So, you have to remember mycotoxicosis due, due to aflatoxin is caused by aspergillus flavors. These are the miscellaneous forms of aspergillosis in which there is keratitis, otitis externa and onychomycosis. In this, there is fungal infection of the eye and the clinching points in the question are corneal infiltrate with indistinct feathery borders. So, whenever there is mention of this word feathery border, then you try to guess towards a fungal cause of keratitis. Now, coming to this question which has been asked in NEET, which of the following is not a diagnostic criteria for ABPA, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. So, all of them are the criteria except distal bronchiectasis because in ABPA there is central bronchiectasis. Now, coming to another question, a patient came to eye OPD with complaints of acute pain and watering from the eye. On examination, there was an ulcer and on the cornea with rolled out margins and feathery finger like projections. So, here is the word you were looking for and with minimal hypopion, the likely etiological agent can be. So, hence this is a case of fungal keratitis and your answer is aspergillus. So, this is all for this recap. We will return after a short break. Thank you.